Sie hören Radio Rumänien International. Die nationalliberale Partei, Mitglied der Koalition in Rumänien, hat Krin Antonescu an der Spitze der Partei wiedergewählt und ihre Projekte für die kommenden vier Jahre bekannt gemacht. Bei der liberaldemokratischen Partei sieht die Lage etwas komplizierter aus. Nach den schwachen Wahlergebnissen im März gibt es zahlreiche Diskussionen über die Parteispitze. Einzelheiten erfahren Sie von Stefan Stoika. Am Mikrofon ist meine Kollegin Dora Michalcescu. Die Tagung der Nationalliberalen Partei hat am vergangenen Wochenende stattgefunden. Der Leiter der Partei, Krin Antonescu, junto con la forma de manejo de los animales de cebo, las propuestas o la solicitud de la interprofesional al ministerio. Los animales de cebo deberían tener unos espacios mayores para, su, para, para poderse ejercitar. Actualmente el cebo se le amplía su espacio donde se va a criar y se va a engordar y se va a quedar en dos metros cuadrados por animal en su etapa de engorde. Entonces, señor Paredes, el objetivo... for disaster preparedness, spends a lot of his time watching the mounting hurricane threat along America's entire eastern seaboard, where more than 8 million people now live at risk from coastal flooding. I think part of the reason that America is not prepared has to do with our cultural bias to the more immediate and really difficulty coping with long-term investments. 22% of America's children live in poverty right now. We, we don't seem to quite grasp that from a policy point of view, and it's similar to the fact that uh, we really do have to strengthen our infrastructure if we're going to be more resilient to disasters in the future. Part of it's human nature, and part of it's lack of leadership, and part of it's a mystery, really. The residents of the devastated community of the Rockaways trying to shame Republicans in Congress into voting their emergency funds. Congress has now voted some $50 billion to back up insurance claims. But the true cost of Sandy is closer to $70 billion, and that's just one storm. So what if it happens again? Malcolm Bowman, professor of oceanology at New York State University, thinks the city needs monumental sea defenses, like those that protect Rotterdam or St. Petersburg. Looking out to sea in Battery Park, he describes his plans. One would go to the Verrazano Narrows to the south of us, across the, under the great Verrazano Bridge. Uh, another one would be in the Upper East River, where the, the harbour joins Long Island Sound, another secondary source of surges. And a third one, the most interesting one to me, is what we call the, the Outer Harbour Gateway, further south between northern New Jersey and the tip of Long Island. But that's a long way. That's a, that's a long barrier. That's a five-mile stretch, but, but the thing is, the water is quite shallow there. It's 20 to 25 feet deep. The buzzword from the mayor's office outwards is resilience. How to do it, though, is a bit more complicated. Giant seawalls would take 10 years to build, and first the city must decide how big and exactly where they should be. And even when they're built, not everyone is safe. Klaus Jacob and Malcolm Bowman, but first George Diodatis. These are going to cost a lot of money, probably something of the order of 20 to 30 billion dollars. This is going to be federal funds. However, they will only protect a small percentage of uh, the population in this area. Essentially, everyone who is in the inside of New York City Harbor part of uh, Manhattan, uh, the inside of uh, Staten Island, and then parts of Brooklyn and Queens. However, the communities that were mostly devastated during Hurricane Sandy will not be protected. 
if New York City decides it's going to stand and fight and not run for the hills, eventually, by that maybe 200 years from now, all these islands, Manhattan Island, Staten Island, and all around New York City is going to have to have a big wall around it. You can't use what we see now. Everything will be flooded here. Some people say, well, we've got to start thinking about evacuating in the long term. Not in our lifetimes, but, but I say, well, you, I don't think that's unrealistic in a way because you talk to the Dutch. You're going to tell them to run for the hills? And if, if the city can be made to last another 250, 300 years, no one can think past that. There is a problem with barriers. Barriers are very good to keep storm surges out. But as sea level rises and you have to keep the barriers open to let the inland water out, you cannot keep sea level rise out. So the ultimate solution is to retreat to its higher ground that it has. Miami and New Orleans don't have that. We all have to move a little bit closer together on high ground and redesign our cities. So if walls are not enough, could New Yorkers ever think the unthinkable and just give parts of the city back to the sea? This is not going to be easy. There are people who have lived there for generations. They are emotionally attached. But this is a long-term solution. So if you open the discussion now with the community and you explain to them that the combination of the sea level rise with future hurricanes might make this distraction much more frequent, eventually you could convince them to move to a higher elevation. The idea has its supporters. Ronald Schiffman is an urban planner who has no doubt that it would be cheaper for some people to move, not least because if they don't, they're going to be hit again and again. Parts of the Rockaways, for instance, a neighbourhood that sits on a fragile spit of land north of New York Harbour, might just have to be abandoned. For $50 million, we could buy out 80 or 90 of these families and move them someplace else and then take that land and use it as marshland to protect some of the upland areas surrounding it. We've got to come up with these strategies. In every community, they'll be a little bit different. In some communities that are multi-story buildings, maybe the issue is to vacate only the first floors. The Dutch have fended off the sea for centuries, and suddenly New York is keen to learn from their experience. Dutchman Jürgen Ertz, who's looking at what sea defences for New York would look like, doesn't believe people will ever volunteer to move. When I look at the facts everywhere...